So myself and Neil, we're just going to talk you through how we would set up our Z6 II. When it comes to the way that my camera is set up, the low light and the action side of things, I'll still be shooting in manual you now and I'll let the ISO roll through auto ISO. So I can rely on a Z6 II, use it in auto ISO, and if the ISO does go high, it's not gonna cause me any issues. We're out here testing the low light on the Z6 II and I'm currently shooting around about 320th of a second. F4, because I've got a 1.4 times teleconverter on as well. Uh, my auto ISO is kind of ranging from about 6,400 to about 10,000 ISO. I've got the 7200 F2.8S. I've got the new uh, two times teleconverter as well. So I'm going to slightly higher shutter speed here. I'm at 640th, F5.6. Um, ISO is ranging up and down, AFC. And I've got the new autofocus, the uh, wide area, uh, animal detect. I think a time like this is great for things like auto ISO because as the light level is dropping you want to focus more on the subject rather than focusing on kind of your composition and you know keep an eye, an eye on kind of what your ISO is doing so auto ISO comes in really handy just as the light level drops your exposure is going to remain the same. I tend to rely on my placement of points so I, I know I, I love shooting dynamic and I love shooting kind of wide area small and wide area large but recently, especially with the Z6 II, I've been giving the auto areas more of a use um, and also like the subject tracking, the animal eye detect more of a use as well. And I found it's been incredibly reliable. I've used a lot more of the eye detect when I'm photographing my dogs. I, I just think it worked really, really well since firmware update three. One of the other things I've found with the Z6 II, buffer rate, the frame rate now, uh, when these deer were running across, it just nailed it, didn't it? Kept up, didn't buffer at all and we've got that increased frame rate on the Z6 II as well. So you can get up to obviously 14 frames per second on a Z6 II. You can get up to 120 raw files before your buffer starts to become full as well. So it just made, it gives you that flexibility when it comes to shooting moving subjects as well. The great thing about the Z6 II is that that low light performance also then creeps into the video side of things as well. So if it was that I wanted to start recording some video, some of these deer running past us or birds flying around, you're then in a scenario where you can rely on a higher ISO, use a faster shutter speed, even in those low light video shooting scenarios. With the wildlife we were shooting today after sunset, low light AF on on the Z6 II, had it on auto ISO, pushing 40,000 ISO, was not concerned at all. We've got the high shutter speed. I've got sharp subjects with the deer running through the forest there. And when we were shooting the new forest ponies as well, high ISO, low light AF, just brilliant on that. My function one button is actually set to subject tracking. So one of the things that I'll tend to do in my Z6 II, especially kind of action and things like that, I'll very quickly change my auto focusing modes. And if there's a scenario where I just feel like, oh, actually, you know, there's one main subject that I want to track, kind of like how the 3D tracking works in the fact that you can lock it onto the subject. When you let go or stop focusing, it will default back to its starting position. So you always know where that subject tracking is going to start from. And I love the fact that now I can kind of take that a step further. And not only is it face tracking, I now have eye detect in video as well which I think just opens up even more flexibility when it comes to choosing how you want to shoot with a Nikon camera.